You see this bike? I love it, but I'm giving it away. I bought this beautiful machine back in the summer of 2016 when my old Trek 8000 finally gave up and broke in half. Oh crap, that is not normal. That there, that there is a broken bicycle. That's when I got this bike, the Trek 920. I essentially needed a new workhorse bicycle. I needed a new adventure bike, a bike that I could go on bike tours with, but also go grocery shopping with, and that's what this machine was. Later that same summer, I rode this bad boy from Boulder to Burning Man out in Nevada, and it was about a thousand mile adventure. We went through Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada, and this bike was solid as a rock. I love you, world! You hear that? I love you! I love this bike. It's fast on the roads, you can take it off-road, it's comfortable. I even like the cool color. It looks like something you'd find in an aisle of like Whole Foods or something. It's got that organic look to it. But the truth is, I really haven't been riding this bike much in the last nine months. You see, back in June of 2018, I got a Trek checkpoint. And I rode that bicycle across the country with my girlfriend, Allie, and you all know about that beautiful story. And the Trek checkpoint is pretty similar to the 920. It's not quite as beefy as this bike, but it's a similar ride. And I've been riding the checkpoint a lot more than this one. So this one has sadly been sitting in my garage. And then I got a message just this past week from a friend that I made last summer. And this is what the message says. Hey Ryan, I was wondering if I could maybe ask for a little bit of help. I'm getting ready for this riding season and I've been saving to buy a good bicycle one that I believe will meet all of my needs. I don't know if you remember, but I was having quite a bit of trouble mechanically last year on Ragbri. I want to get a Trek 920. I have some money, but I'm not sure I will have even enough to buy a good used one by the time I head out on my first trip this spring. Is there anyone you know at Trek who could maybe assist me? Some of you might be putting this together, people who follow the Love Cycles adventure and specifically Ragbri. But this message is from that awesome guy, Luke, that I met that one morning. He stopped me and told me all about how cycling changed his life and how he lost over 200 pounds and how motivated he is now to ride bikes. I was in the doctor's office. Something was going on with my heart. And the doctor told me, he was like, listen, if hey, you're done. And I was like, what do you mean I'm done? And he said, you got, you got two choices. You're either gonna change your ways or you're gonna die very young. I was 544 pounds and I developed AFib. It's an arrhythmia in my heartbeat. And I left there that day and I started a diet and I set goals for myself and I lost 44 pounds in the first month and 74 pounds by the end of the second month. And then I started uh, swimming for a little while but then I got on a bike and I started riding. And that's where I found you on, on YouTube because I was just constantly YouTubing different stuff, trying to learn about it, and just your positive nature and how positive you were about everything. And I, I realized like I developed kind of a funk where I was a real pessimist and I was constantly really negative. And I thought, I need to be like that guy. I need to constantly just be smiling and happy and learn how to be that kind of excited. And I think a big part of it has to do with the fact that you ride a bike everywhere and you're just, you're more in touch with, I mean, the world with life. I mean, we just had a baby. I mean, that's a huge part of all this for me because my baby, like, here, I'll show you a picture, man. Yeah, let's do it. I don't want to get to a point where, like, when I'm 45 or 50 or something, they're like, I can't do this kind of stuff with her. I want to be able to take her on these adventures and go do cool stuff with her. And, you know, I, I have this dream that someday maybe me and my wife be able, might be able to go on bike trips and, you know, I could have the baby at some point in one of those little trailers and then eventually maybe on one of those little those little piggyback bikes that hangs off the back or whatever and then eventually there's my kid riding right alongside me and hopefully my kid never knows what it's like to be obese i was morbidly obese and a big part of it was because we just growing up like you know my parents encouraged us to go outside and play and everything but i just was never really an active child and so i want to try to encourage my daughter to be as active as possible and get out and see the world and just do cool stuff meeting luke was very impactful this guy's story is incredible and i saw him throughout the week at ragbri and he was having a great time but it was really hard for him he had never done anything like this in his life and ragbri you ride 
you know, anywhere from 50 to 70 miles a day. It's, it's hard. And he was riding a very cheap bike that kept on braking. And he was telling me about every night he was going to the mechanic with busted spokes and wheels. And, it, you know, you, I felt for the guy because it's like, well, you want him to have this great experience, but he's also riding a machine that's not really up to the adventure. You know, his bike was like a, a probably a $150 Walmart bike that's just not a touring bike. Luke and I have been in touch since Ragbri. We're friends on Facebook. We chat back and forth. And when I got his message this week, I really wanted to help, but I didn't know quite what I could do because the truth is my contact at Trek isn't there anymore. So I don't really have a connection to get deals. But you know what I do have? I do have a Trek 920 and I was like, dude, I'll just give you my Trek 920. How does that sound? So here it is, Luke, come and get it. Just kidding, buddy. I know that you live in Illinois. I will pack this up and send it your way. It fills my heart with joy knowing that this Trek 920, this beautiful machine is going to have a new life with Luke. It's been sadly sitting in storage for the past nine months and that is no place for a bicycle to be. This bicycle needs to be free. And I know that Luke and this bike are gonna go on many adventures together. Wee! When I told Luke that I would give him this bike straight up, he was overwhelmed. And he said, well, what, what can I do? And I said, well, you said that you had saved up some money for a new bike. Why don't you donate that money to some sort of organization that you truly believe in? And he said, awesome. And you know, the more that I, I sit here and I stand and I'm talking about Luke, I think, why don't we just, let's just, let's just call Luke. What's up, Luke? Can you see me yet? I cannot there see you yet. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Oh, look who it is. Do the hands thing. Do the hands thing. Hi, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh God, so, are you psyched or what about this bike? Oh my God, I'm beyond psyched about this bike. I didn't even think this happened. I'm gonna tell you, man. Like when when you sent me that message and, and said that you wanted to give me your bike, I started crying. I've never been able to afford a bike that was like a real good quality bike. And it's always kind of been a dream that, you know, if I could get into this enough, I could save up enough. And if I do enough of these trips, then I feel like I could justify spending that kind of money on a bike. Because you got to understand, I don't even spend that kind of money on a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Every car, but all of it led up to this lifestyle that now that I, I wake up every morning and I, and I just, I look forward to my daily bike ride. I look forward to what's coming this summer. I look forward to what might be next year. I look forward to the adventures to come. So you mentioned you saved up a little bit of money that you would have spent on this bike and now maybe you can donate some of that. Talk about that, uh, the nonprofit that you love working with. The American Heart Association has been working for all of us. We have a juvenile obesity problem in this country. I was a fat kid. I have no better way to put it. Yeah. And there's so many of our kids out there that are extremely obese. And you know, if a child becomes obese as a child, they have an 80% likelihood of being an obese adult. Yeah. I you kind of feel like, you know, I got a heart problem because I allowed myself to become so incredibly obese. And I think it's just largely because I just didn't, I didn't really know any better until it was a problem. Yeah. And the American Heart Association is the only organization I've seen that is making that much of an effort to make children aware of the importance of diet and exercise before it becomes a problem for them. Thank you very much, man. I can't tell you thank you enough. Well, you have a wonderful night. Get back to your beautiful girls. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch, dude. Thank you. Have All right. Good. See you, bud. Wow. What a guy. The connection wasn't great, but man, he is, he's not only helping himself out by becoming a healthier human, he's spreading it to everybody he meets. And uh, he's doing a lot of good in the world. I couldn't think of a better guy for this bike. So Luke, enjoy it, my friend. Cheers. We got Luke on the right side. Woo! We got Allie on the left side. Woo!